Welcome to the Let's Go Recovery podcast, where we investigate sobriety and beyond that, explore solutions to help us heal at the core, where the root of our problems like addiction or alcoholism begin. We hope you hear something in today's podcast that ignites a change in your life. So I'm here today with Kristen Day at Art of Our Soul, beautiful studio. Thanks Thank for being you. here, Kristen. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. You know, once I read about it and heard about it, I just had to get you on and, and talk a little bit about what you're doing here in Thank Phoenix, you. Arizona. Tell me a little bit about Art of Our Soul and the studio that you have here. So Art of Our Soul, um, it was founded by Brandon Lee. He used to be a Channel 5 news anchor here in the Valley, and uh, he made this safe space for trauma survivors and alcoholics and addicts so that they can come in and, and do art and heal, you know, heal from their trauma and heal from their addiction and uh, just create it. We're uh, musically driven, so we pound the music and we just throw paint all over and fling it around and it gets fun and messy and all that good stuff. Well, it sounds like you have a good time. You've already hit on a couple of them, but who are some of the people that you're experiencing have, I'm going to say healed, if we can Mm -hmm. use that language, uh, healed through the process of art? Like who are the people that you work with? So we definitely uh, deal with, you know, substance abuse treatment centers. Um, We partner with about 20 of them here in the Valley. And we, um, we also partner with like Child Crisis AZ and Florence Crittenden, which is um, children or little girls that are 12 to 17. Uh, We deal with the teen moms, which I was a teen mom. So that's really near and dear to my heart. And, um, and then the little boys from child crisis, you know, like these little kids are are in DCS custody and their parents are locked up and they don't have anybody. So we get to work with them and, and give them a safe place that they're comfortable and, and get to create this abstract art and you know, Awesome. We'll yeah. get into the specifics of it. We're going to hopefully be able to go through a little session myself Absolutely. after this. Uh, but tell me a little bit about the science or, or what happens when I become creative or when I'm doing art. What's the separation from my addiction or crisis trauma, whatever it might be? So basically, when you're coming in and you're doing this, we're building serotonin. We're building ourselves up and it's abstract art. Like if I was to give you a pencil and have you draw a bird on a canvas, you would be like, shit, that looks stupid or oh my God, that doesn't look right. You know what I mean? For me, for sure. (laughs) Exactly. I'm not an artist. I can now say that I'm an artist, but that's by Brandon molding me into who I am in the last year. You know, I had no artistic ability unless I stuck drugs in my body. And when I was a tweaker, I thought I could do everything, you know, give me a Dremel and I'm Dremel and etching glass and and all kinds of stuff. But you give me a paintbrush and I'm like, oh God. How do I do this? Yes. So we don't use any paintbrushes in here. We, uh, We just use acrylic paint and we pour it on and we take the blow dryer and and then we actually manipulate so i'll show you in the in the demo it's going to be super I'm looking awesome super forward to that and then tell me a little bit about like as you start talking about creative i just heard something the other day that says that basically that my worries and anxiety exist in the same kind of neurological pathway as um, my creative mm-hmm. so if i'm being creative I'm actually not able to live in that kind of negative buzz that's in our brain and in our soul. What about that? What what happens there for you? What when you're creating? What tell me about that? When I'm creating, I actually go into a different place. You know, like you can't go in and envision like one thing because this is abstract art. So you're going in thinking I'm going to do it this way and it's going to turn out that way and then it's going to be something completely different. You have to go in with an open mind, just like in recovery open mind. You know what I mean? And, um, I go in, you know, sometimes I, I, my color schemes, I usually go off the colors of my flannel or, um, my tattoo shop that I just opened, stuff like that. Like I, I pick my color scheme from there and then I put it on the canvas. So I can definitely appreciate that. That's you're putting a lot of thought into it. And that's, was the one thing I wanted to make sure they understand Mm -hmm. is this is a thoughtful studio. Like it's not something that somebody came up with that. Oh, how can we charge people to do art? Absolutely. This place is designed to create, recover, trauma help, crisis help, yes. those those sorts of things. This space is designed for those people. The people that you're having here, tell me about, I know we talked about kids. You had mentioned to me before that you have like firefighters or military or some of that. Tell me a little so bit about those So we're actually going to be starting to work with the police department and having the detectives and um, their 911 dispatchers come in and they need some, they need some healing. 
You know, the work that they're doing out on those streets, it's tough out there. So being able to come in here and just have a safe place to just and breathe and take a breath and do whatever you want. You know, eventually I know that, you know, we've looked into um, doing stuff with the prisons and doing stuff with the jails and doing stuff, you know, with veterans, um, autistic children, because these are things that are going to build them to be a better person. You know what I mean? And that's just what we're all about at Art of Our Soul. Um, the, the other thought that there is, is that all, um, addiction. So as we get into the addiction and the recovery part and let's mm-hmm. go recovery is really talking about addiction of some sort, right? right? We, we turn to something, but that's based on the fact that I have pain or I have trauma and that's the starting point of pretty much everybody's addiction at some right. level. So as I create and as I build some type of art or, or um, sculpture or whatever it is, mm-hmm. uh, when you say all of that falls under the category of art, I am no longer addicted to those things at some point. Right. I'm recovering from something. something. So when, in your own journey um, of recovery, how did art and or other things that you did impact your recovery journey? So like I said, when I was tweaking, when I was in my addiction, um, art helped me fade away. You know, it was like when you, when you're on meth, you like to color, you're like, oh, I'm this extravagant, you know, I have my markers and my gel pens and all kinds of coloring books and it's beautiful. And then I look back at that stuff and I'm like, oh my God, I was not an artist back then. It was hideous. Like these things are not okay. You know what I mean? But now, um, I get to make these beautiful pieces. I mean, Almost all my friends have a piece of my art in their house, which is super awesome. You know, I get to give them as Christmas presents and and stuff like that. Um, People enjoy it because it's something that you've never seen before, Mm -hmm. you know. And like I said, it's abstract art. Um, There's no, you know. Right or wrong answer. Exactly. You can't mess it up, you know. It's going to come out the way that it's supposed to come out. Perfect. So, yeah, I love the idea that I don't, if I don't come in here with any expectations, um, and we both have went through a 12 step program and, and done some of that. And, and on the other side of our addiction is a more creative, a more right. responsible person, a person that shows up. We talk a lot about that, but also is there's, um, I think it's on page 567. It says we'll have a spiritual awakening. We'll be awakened inside. Absolutely. Do you see that in your studio where oh people gosh. start putting paint down and they start creating and they just become alive? They think a lot of times we think that's an external thing. That's actually an internal process that happens. Tell me about what happens in some of these so cases. So listen, um, we deal with uh, the folks in reentry. I had a gentleman in here, thirty three years in prison. Mm. You know what I mean? Toughest guy, like you know, been through it all. High max security, like all kinds of stuff. Solitary confinement wow. for twenty two years of his sentence, and he came in here and laid paint down on this canvas, and it was just like breathtaking. And he's an amazing artist outside of pouring, you know, paint with us. But oh my gosh, to see the light just shine, and he was just like, wow, this is something so cool, you know, um, and in especially with the people that are coming out of reentry and, you know, into the, from the prisons and stuff like that. Um, they really take to this, you know, uh, the guys at crossroads, they really like, there's, I'm not supposed to have favorites, but they're seriously my favorite. <laughs> like awesome. they come in here so grateful and just full of life, you know, and until you come into art of our soul and you actually see what we do, people like come and they're like, I'm not going in. I'm not an artist. Right. I'm not doing this. Like, uh, no. And then they come in and we have the music blaring and they're like, okay. I see. (laughs) All right. You know, and then they come in and they, and we share our story, you know, either myself, Carrie or Brandon share our story. And then uh, we do art with them for 60 minutes. You talk a little bit about story. Mm -hmm. Um, You got here, we both got here somehow, some way, and how we got here is really unimportant to me. And I tell a lot of people that, and they kind of go like, oh, that's weird. But I go, how you got here is unimportant. Like to this moment, even me and you sitting here, it's what we do with these times, these opportunities we have that are important. So how the people got here, if that's not 
not important to you um, necessarily in what they create, but it is important in their healing. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about how you got here, a little bit about your story, about you. So, I mean, I can tell you I was I was a drug addict for 19, 20 years, you know? Like, I started doing drugs when I was 13, and I... Uh, I had kids, you know, I, I had an abortion when I was 14. I, I had a miscarriage when I was 16. I got married at 16. I grew up really quick, you know, um, by the time I was 19, I got introduced to meth and I was, you know, screwing the dope dealer and, and I had given my son up for temporary guardianship to my parents so that they could raise him. And, um, and then I got knocked up again you know, and I was doing meth until I was six months pregnant with my daughter. And I, uh, I ended up in Australia, in Australia jail. And I, um, you know, I was broken and I, I'm grateful that all that happened because I don't know that I would have been able to stop, you know, and God does for us what we can't do for ourselves sometimes. And I needed to go to jail so that I could stop hitting that pipe. Um, so when I got arrested, my parents let me sit in there and stew for a little bit. And, uh, I was about nine months pregnant and they finally let me out and, uh, and I went to treatment and then I had my daughter. Um, she was three weeks early, nine pounds, 22 and a half inches long and not a trace of meth in her. Oh. And that's God. You know what I mean? Like that's God right there. Um, I wish I could stay. I said, stayed sober. I didn't, you know, I did good for a little bit. I, uh, you know, I had a full ride scholarship to ASU West. I threw it all away. Everything. Um, my daughter was getting in the way of me getting high. I gave her up for adoption, mm -hmm. you know, and then I got pregnant again and it was a cycle all over again. Like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to do good for a little bit until I don't because I'm not healing from these things. I'm not healing from my childhood trauma. I'm not healing from the adult trauma that I went through. Mm -hmm. And I'm still cycling through these things. Um, and I drugged that little girl, my youngest, through a lot. She's seen a lot of abuse. And um, when you're raised around that and you feel like that's all you deserve, that's what you flock to, you know? I didn't feel like I deserved anything better than a man beating me and telling me I was a piece of shit and that I deserved to die. Um, so my daughter was about 10 years old, uh, my last daughter, and I, uh, I got introduced to heroin and I got introduced to the needle and it, from there it was on and popping. I lost the house, the car and the kid in 32 days of sticking a needle in my arm. Wow. Yeah. And I share my story. Like, listen, like I'm not anonymous. I'm not, mm -hmm. I share my stuff and I scream from the rooftop because I don't want people to die. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, um, I've built this brand of myself as a hope dealer. Mm -hmm. I used to sell dope and right. now I sell hope, but I give it away so, for free. Nice. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, it's hard. It really is, especially working in the industry that we work in. And like I worked in behavioral health and seeing some of these girls that come in here and they're so fucking broken. Mm -hmm. And I just want to like love on them. Guys too. Like guys are softies, mm. you know, the, biggest, hardest, toughest men come in here and they got teardrops and, and, and I'm like, no, buddy, you're about to, you're about to feel something that you've never felt before. So back to my whole story is like, I, uh, I lost my daughter. Um, I went to treatment and I got, I got sober for a little bit. I was about nine months sober and, uh, I was doing meetings and sponsoring and everything. And I got cocky. Like, oh, I got this. Mm -hmm. I don't have shit. And I'm six years sober. You know what I mean? Um, I have to stay open-minded. And I have to stay willing to learn new things. Um, but I got cocky and I ended up with a needle in my arm. My rights were severed and my daughter was adopted. And I didn't see her for two and a half years. Wow. Yeah. You know? Um, my daughter that I gave up for adoption, her adopted parents are a huge part of my recovery. Um, I don't know that I would be the woman I am today without them. You know, um, my mom too. My mom's my biggest enabler, but my biggest supporter. Um, she's walked through a lot of things with me. And uh, my parents have always uh, raised my son and allowed me to see him as well. So, um, but like I said, I lost my, you know, I lost my youngest and I, uh, I went on a sick one for another year and a half. I wanted to die. 
I wanted to die so bad. And I would like wake up in the hotel room with a needle still in my arm from the night before, screaming at the rooftop, like, why am I still here? And I know now that I've worked through all this, that I'm supposed to be here. Mm -hmm. And my purpose is to share my story and to help others. So I, uh, I never got my kid back, you know, and that was really hard. Um, jumping back into recovery this time, I jumped with both feet before I had a reservation. So I was like one foot in, mm, one foot out. Sure. You know, I was doing it to appease DCS. I was doing it to shut my family up. I was doing it so I could see my kids. I didn't have any of that this time. Mm -hmm. I was finally doing it for myself. I always say kids are a good motivator, but you will not stay sober for them. And I promise mm -hmm. you that because I'm living proof. Absolutely. I fuck that up, right. you know, and that's something and where I'm at in my journey today is learning to forgive myself. Mm -hmm. I can do all the step work and I can do my amends, but how am I going to heal so that I forgive myself? from all the trauma and everything that I've done, not only to myself, but hurting my children and hurting my family and my friends. Like I'm not that person anymore, you know, but they tend to, they, so for instance, my youngest, she keeps me at arm's distance mm. at arm's length. You know what I mean? And I don't blame her, but I know that when the time is right, God is going to place her back in my life and she's going to let that barrier down. You know what I mean? Um, I took a break from, you know, I always said that men were my number one addiction. Mm -hmm. Um, I really took a break 2017, 2018. I mean, I had a little, you know, boy toy here and there, but sure. I, I took a break. I really needed to do some deep soul searching and figure out who Kristen was and what she wanted in life. And in 2019, God placed an amazing man in my life. And, uh, I'll tell you what, like it swooped me, like I've never been swooped before off my feet. And it was like love at first sight. The minute I met that man, I was drooling. And I told my girlfriend that night, I was like, I'm going to marry that man one day. And she's like, you're crazy. <laughs> and I was like, no, for real. Like, I, I know I'm crazy, but I'm, I'm serious. And, uh, 2021, we got married. Awesome. You know, um, he's also in recovery super amazing. I will tell you this though, relationships and recovery are hard. Mm. Do you know what I mean? He has to do his recovery and I have to do mine. And then we meet in the middle. I can't take his inventory. He can't take mine. Right. Straight up. You know what I mean? Um, he has called my sponsor a couple times on me, which ooh, that's one thing. It just, <laughs> it gets to me, but uh, he knows how to get to me. You right. know what I mean? Sure. Cause I'm slacking. Sure. I'm doing things that I shouldn't have done. And, and he's like, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell on I'm you. I'm going to tell on you. I'm like, <laughs> damn, got to go to the principal's office. No, I'm just kidding. But still, yeah. Tell me, you know, you've hit on some really key points that um, I love talking about. There's a big gap between the word sobriety and recovery mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, I want any viewers or anybody that's, you know, listening or watching today to understand what you and I are talking about today is recovery. Right. Like, I don't like who I used to be. Right. I want to be different than who I was. Th right. Those sorts of things require recovery. So you can count your days, mm -hmm. which is awesome. If you haven't drank or haven't done something today, you know, we're right. proud of you. Cool. Great. That's awesome. But at some point, recovery is a journey to myself. Right. Like you just said, you had to do some pretty big unpacking to figure out who you were, yeah. who you want to be. And that's when you experience recovery. Right. Tell me about that. Where was that switch for you? You've been clean for seven years. There's six. Six, yeah. almost seven years. Um, in that time, where did some of those light bulbs go off for you? Where did you say, wow, I'm not doing, I'm not counting days. I'm changing. I'm mm -hmm. morphing into who I want to be. What were what some of those? Give me some of those like key so, points. Honestly, I think my first year of recovery was a big one for me. You know, like, holy shit, I really can do this for the first time in my life. I can pee in a cup and I can be sober <laughs> of every, off of everything. You know what I mean? Um, but you and I have talked before meetings are a sliver of this. Mm. You know what I mean? Meetings are a sliver of this. So or working with your sponsor is a sliver of this. Mm. My motto in life is if you don't heal from the trauma that has hurt you, you are going to bleed onto others that have never hurt you before. Wow. Say that again. You are, if you do not heal 
from the trauma that has hurt you before, you will bleed onto others that have never hurt you. Wow. That's impactful. Absolutely. And it, that was my thing is that I don't want to bleed onto my husband. You know, um, we're in marriage counseling. It's not because our marriage is bad. It's because we're learning how to have healthy communication. I don't know how to have a healthy relationship. I'm a fighter. Mm-hmm. Like I want to fight. I'm used to dudes beating my ass, you know, knocking my teeth out, stabbing me in the head with a butter knife. Those are the things I'm used to. So when my husband wants to come and love on me, I'm like, huh, <laughs> huh, yeah. you know? And um, so that's where I'm learning. I'm learning to heal from those things so that I don't fuck him up. Right. You know? And, um, and we've gotten the opportunity to get his two children. And we have full custody wow. of both of his kids. And that was a lot in the beginning. Um, his baby's mom is one of us, and she okay. doesn't like to admit it, you know. And uh, and we got the opportunity to get his son when he was three. He's seven now. And, man, I'm telling you what, my life changed. You know, I was loving sobriety. I was on this pink cloud. I was always everywhere and partying and all kinds of stuff. And God was like, mm, we're going to slow you down, girl. Ooh, mama. We're going to put you a little kid right there with pull-ups and you're going to learn how to be a mom like you were supposed to. And I was oh, like, great. oh, shit. Like, I'm not and ready I, for I'm this. I'm not ready for that, <laughs> no, you know. No, no. And, uh, and, and I fought it for a couple months. You know, and uh, and I worked through that stuff with my sponsor and I'm like, why am I why am I like this? You know, and she's like, because you're afraid. Mm. You're afraid of failure. You're afraid. And bitch, I want you to open your eyes and realize that you've built this solid foundation and God is placing this little boy in your life at the right time for you to be the mom that you're supposed to be. And I was like. Oh, that's deep. Hey, right. Oh, oh God. Right. That's powerful. <laughs> yeah. One of my other uh, favorite phrases in recovery is that we are most qualified to help the people we used to be. Absolutely. Uh, right? So you're taking oh, women that are, and you, we just talked about one of your friends that, you know, just doesn't know how to react to life on life's terms. Absolutely. We, some of that language is actually potent and, and people don't realize that it stands the test of time. The struggles that existed, you know, back when AA was started right. and all these, you know, organizations came along and found out that, wait a minute, they're still the same in 2023. Right. I don't know how to deal with life when it comes at me like an avalanche. Absolutely. And so you're taking women on this journey and saying, moms and, and, and wives and women, you don't have to be X anymore, right? right? And I loved what you said about that. Tell me on these these women that you're working with, we say that's an important uh, part of our recovery. Mm -hmm. So working with others is an important part of our recovery. Why is that key component for you? I mean, it's really big for me, um, the DCS fact. You know what I mean? Like I lost my kids. I Mm. lost my kids. But now I have this amazing opportunity. Like I can remember us fighting my husband's DCS case with his baby's mom. And I was literally looking at myself in a mirror four years prior. And I'm like yelling at her, the baby's mom. And I'm like, I want to strangle you because I'm looking at myself four years ago and I'm telling you, you're about to lose everything and you're going to lose these kids and you're never going to get them back. And she was like, and she got her shit together for a little bit. Wow. And she got the kids back. Granted, we kept the little one. We got Ryder, but um, she got her other kids and she did good for a little while. Mm. But now she's on a little rocky road again. But now what's really cool is working with, you know, people that have DCS cases or working with these girls that are in DCS custody. I get to be like a mentor and I get to show them it's okay. Like you can trust an adult. We're not all fucked up. We're yeah, not no. all horrible, horrible human, human <laughs> beings. You know what I mean? Um, and we get to open their eyes and make them realize some things. And that's what I love about Art of Our Soul and what we do here is it's a safe place. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You don't have to worry about anything once you walk through that door. I like to say that if you don't like something about your yesterday and you don't want that to be part of your tomorrow, that you need to make some changes today. Today. Right. This idea that today is the opportunity. There's a whole bunch of cutesy sayings that we have in these meetings Mm -hmm. that you and I go to, but there's so much value placed in just this moment. Slow down, breathe and look like what's right in front of me right now. 
right? right? So for me and you, I get to have this awesome experience with you. But the reality is some people that are watching aren't going to realize that you and I both, and I'm going to, we'll go back before your sobriety, you've been cleaner longer than I have, but let's say eight years ago, mm -hmm. you and I both were probably sitting in the same garbage, mm -hmm. shame, guilt, Absolutely. all of that stuff so that we could be here Right now. right now. So every bad decision we've made, every horrible thing we've done to some other human being, every hurt we've caused, mm -hmm. every broken dream, every failed – I'm a father. Right. I know what it's like to let down your kids. Absolutely. Right? And, and so when, I, when you say stuff like that, I realize that that is the opportunity because of all those that I can not only just help other people people, right. somebody that's watching this right now, but we actually have the ability to participate in our own lives today fully. Yeah. Like I just uh, gave you some tickets to a son's game. Oh and my God, having, I'm so like, excited. Like you're going to get to go to a game and, and fully be there. Yeah. Like how many games and be, and present. How many, be present? How many things have we done that were like, yeah, check the box. Mm -hmm. I was there. And like, you realize I wasn't there. I don't know the score. I was drunk. Uh, right. I was high. Uh, you, like, did, you did great. Yeah. And like you're, my daughter's looking at me going like, wow, you weren't even there. Or right. I saw you in the audience you weren't even you know or you're being an idiot that was Absolutely. my that's my problem yeah you know, i was being an idiot and we're just looking for these like precious moments mm -hmm. in life that's all we have right. so if you're watching if the people are watching today and hearing something we want them to know it, whether it be at, at art of our soul or just wherever you are be present yeah. participate and do the things there's a lot of people that i know that you know in recover the recovery world mm -hmm. tell me some of these other things that maybe you've done or experienced when i start talking about alternative recovery resources? What are some of the other things other than a meeting or sponsorship or 12-step um, program? You obviously do art here. What right. are some other things you've done that you think might be an effective tool for somebody that's listening? Honestly, um, where I'm at in my journey right now is counseling, therapy. Oh, wow. Therapy has really saved not just my life. It's saved my marriage. Mm -hmm. It's helped open another door um, in my recovery journey that I'm not so hard anymore. Do you know what I mean? Like we're hard to love um, because we have so many trust issues and we've been through so many things that I always keep somebody at arm's distance because I'm afraid if I let them in around me, it's going to fuck me up. Mm. So my biggest journey right now is therapy. Awesome. Therapy. And I think that a lot of people don't realize that when we talk about your past driving, you, you, everything that happened to you before, mm -hmm. you, me, everybody else that's listening, every other addict, everything that's happened to them is actually driving their reactions today. Right. So we learned at a young age, don't touch the hot stove because it, it hurts. What we do as addicts is we touch the hot stove again and again and, and again, again, and then we start actually liking it mm -hmm. where I go, I've escaped because if I put this substance in my body, my kids don't frustrate me as much. Right. My wife doesn't seem as annoying. My work isn't as difficult. Absolutely. So I start using that not only as a coping mechanism, but almost like a safety net. Absolutely. Like I fall back into that. What do you say to the person that's relied on drugs and alcohol for let's say years or mm -hmm. lots of years and they've used that as their as their tool? What do you say to them to maybe make a change today? What are some of the, the, the thoughts or um, responses you have to that? Get a hobby. Find something that you love to do. Art. Art helps me. Sure. Like when I'm feeling in a funk, listen, I never come in here having a bad day. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what, if I'm having a rough day in the morning and then I do an art piece, oh my gosh, I feel a million times better after I create that piece. Um, find something that you like to do, you know, enjoy and be in that moment. Um, again, heal from the past. Cause I promise you that is going to, if you don't heal from those things, you're going to, you know, constantly look for that solution and, oh, I'm going to go drink. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go do drugs to, to feel better, to numb out. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to go away. You're going to keep getting high. We so. we talk a you and you hit on two very very obvious points mm -hmm. alcoholics and addicts mm -hmm. okay those those are me and you right yeah. so we can we can talk about that but also 
people are recovering from a lot of other things that they don't even recognize, and that's relationships, mm -hmm. gambling, maybe maybe a um, eating behavior, mm -hmm. right? So all of those sorts of things are just their coping mechanism. Right. What you're talking about is is you're still going to have hurt. You're still going to have frustration. You're still going to have these things in your Absolutely. life. It didn't go away. Like because we stopped drinking and using, we actually found out how much we relied on those things. Right. Right. We became we recognized our addiction and our alcoholism as that's what I do. Right. So as you put those down and start healing and start doing other things with your time, you also have to when you say trauma th or therapy, give me is that one on one counseling or what is so that? So I look do like? one on one therapy um, w once a week, and then. My husband does one-on-one -on -one therapy, and then we do marriage counseling, and then I do therapy. He does therapy. So for three weeks, it's one-on-one, wow. -on -one, uh, marriage counseling, his therapy. So we go back and forth, and um, and that's helped a lot. You know what I mean? Um, touching on, like, the whole eating disorder type stuff, like um, – when I got sober and I don't talk a lot about this. So like people that haven't seen me in the recovery community, um, look at me and they're like, Oh my God, how did you lose all that weight? Like I used to be 250 pounds two years ago. Wow. You know what I mean? And, uh, I had to really do some soul searching. Um, I was, I, on the outside, I looked great, you know, and everybody was like, oh my God, I love you and blah, blah, blah. But I hated myself oh, and I was wow. miserable in my own skin. I hated the way that I looked. I had gained a hundred pounds getting sober and I was miserable mm -hmm. and I would eat my feelings away and everything. And, uh, in April of 2022, I went to, uh, Mexico and I got a gastric bypass. Um, I did it for myself though. Like I wasn't doing it for anybody else, but for myself. And that has really healed me inside as well of learning how to love myself and to be who I am today, um, to walk with my head up and, and with dignity and grace and, and just be proud of who I am. You know, yes, I was a beautiful person back then, but I didn't feel beautiful. You know what I mean? Right. People can tell you you're beautiful every day, but unless you feel that inside, you're never going to see what they see. And um, I've really worked on that in this last 18 months is getting comfortable in my own skin and really carrying myself in a different in a different realm. So thanks for sharing that. Absolutely. Sharing that. We talk about us having a three um, fold, they say this threefold disease. So there's mm -hmm. three things that I'm actually working on. It's not just my willpower. I have a mental obsession, mm -hmm. right? I like, I like putting drugs and alcohol in my body, right. right? But I have a physical ailment to it. But the third thing is that spirit, which we're talking a lot about today is that spiritual thing. Yeah. And it's how I feel about me. Mm -hmm. Like you can tell me all the things you want. You're a good guy, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and you did this and how nice of you. But when I get up in the morning and I look at myself in the mirror, I've got to like who I am or who I'm becoming. Otherwise, I slip back into addict behavior. Right. So it's not just that I haven't picked up the substance. It's actually a behavior. Right. So some of the behavioral things that you and I are talking about are learned, mm -hmm. right? So you said, how long was it that you were not, didn't feel great about yourself? How long, what period of time was that um, after you were clean? After I was clean, there was a good, like, I don't know. It was like two and a half years. Like I was wow. really just not comfortable in my own skin. Like I really held it together on the outside and people would have never known. You mm. know, I masked it so good. But now that I look back at pictures, I'm like, oh my God, I was so miserable and I was so broken inside. And now I'm just so full of life. And people always tell me, like, it radiates off of sure. you. You know, you glow. I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you, you look great. Thank and you. Uh, I'm, I'm proud of you. I mean, because some of that sort of stuff is, it's your personal journey. And again, your weight or what you drive or right. how much money you have in your bank account doesn't define any of us. Any of us. Right. And so we start attaching. Um, I'm going to say bigger values to certain mm -hmm. things. I'm going to share with you an experience that I just had that will definitely make me emotional, but it's, it's super powerful because people don't recognize like the time that goes into it. You're right. talking about two and a half years. Right. Okay. So 
Um, I have twins, mm-hmm. um, and that are they're 22 uh, now as of today. But my one of my twins and I typically we we clash heads, yes. right? So um, she's just like me a lot a lot of ways, yep. right? So everything I, I always feel like there's some there's some fight there. Well, she's come back home from college. They're in college, and she's up in Michigan, and, and so she's came back, and we've had some experiences. Well, this last time she was back over Thanksgiving, she asked, you know, we we talked about mm-hmm. going golfing. And she said, you know, like she agreed to do something with dad. Like we're going to go golfing, right? And I can tell you right now as a father, there's nothing that you could have told me was going on that would make me not want to go golfing with her, right? right? In that moment, there's nothing I wanted because it makes me feel good. feel good. But one of my friends said to me that knows our situation, knows how Mm -hmm. we're there. They said, how did you get your daughter to go golfing with you? Like they saw pictures like, and this was never going to happen, right? right? Like one of those things. And I said- and this is November, so this would be November of 2023. Mm-hmm. We did, we had this event, and they go, they go, how did you get her to go golfing with you? I said because I didn't drink on January 3rd, 2021. Right. I had been not drinking for that moment. That moment. Right. So if you're listening or and people are watching, they've got to realize that they're on a journey. Mm-hmm. Right. It's and and I'm not talking about stacking days and oh I'm staying sober like I'm counting days. What are you and doing, doing to heal from all that though? Right. Like what are you doing right. today and what are you looking forward to? Because these experiences they're not just going to be like oh throwing a parade because I'm 90 days sober. My daughter doesn't come running into my arms because I haven't picked up drugs and alcohol for a while. Right. That we're creating memories and then I'm on a journey not just for a day or a moment. I'm on a journey for my life. For life. Like I want to play the main character in the movie of my life. And right. the only way, and I'm sure you're going to say the yep. same thing, the only way we can do that is not picking up a drink right. or a drug today. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about um, beyond here. Like what are your goals? What are your ambitions? What do you see for Kristen Day in the future? Oh, God. Like some of the things that you have on the on the horizon. Um, so I started modeling when I was 90 days sober. Um, I was a plus size model, so now I'm uh, reinventing myself into a not plus size model. <laughs> right. What is that? What is that? Like, I'm I'm, those, I'm reinventing myself into a smaller model, which is really cool. Um, next year, I really want to focus on you know doing some more fashion shows and getting out there. Um, you know, maybe some tattoo magazines. Those are my goals, you know. Um, my husband and I just opened a tattoo shop, so um, we're super excited about that. And we're going to be hitting some tattoo conventions and uh, just traveling and stuff like that, you know. Um, this weekend, I get to walk in a fashion show uh, with my stepdaughter, oh, which wow. is freaking awesome, dude. How old is she now? She's nine. She'll be 10 next week. Cool. Her and my uh, 19-year-old are born on the same day. They're 10 days apart. Oh, cool. So we get to celebrate their birthday next weekend. and uh, But she gets to walk in a fashion show with me this week and and. You know, it's going to be super cool. What, do you, what is she modeling? Uh, clothes for Old Navy. I see you wearing that Dixon uh, flannel. In wrapping up, before we get started on maybe doing a little bit of art, anything else you want to add? Anything you want to say to the – let's let's talk to the person for just a moment who was um, like you day one, day three, day eight, those early days of recovery. What are you saying to that person? And then also I want you to talk to the person that's a year sober – bored out of their mind. I don't know if this is for me. Like I've stayed sober, but maybe some of these promises and some of these things your guys are talking about hasn't Mm -hmm. come true in my life. So what do you say to those, that audience? So, um, I will say that in that audience, um, (laughs) come out, come out, come out of your shell. Like think outside the box. We have a lot of fun in recovery. Come check us out at the spot. You know what I mean? Like we do sober events there just to show people like you don't have to be loaded to have a good time. Have a good time. Right. Like we put on comedy shows. We do karaoke every week or every month. You know, stuff like that. Like there's a lot of fun events in sobriety that people just don't know about because they're so scared that, oh my God, I'm never going to be able to go to a bar or do this or do that because I'm sober. Mm. I'm the life of the party (laughs) minus drugs and alcohol. I'll tell you that right away. Um, We're a whole vibe. You know what I mean? Um, And also a newcomer coming in. It doesn't matter where you've been through. Or what you've, it doesn't matter where you've come from or what you've been through. You can do anything you put your mind to. You have the opportunity to be the person you've always wanted to be. Um, I love that you're talking about the the life of the party and the fun. 
I go on a lot of trips and do a lot of golf mm-hmm. uh, events. I'm a golfer, um, as you may know. But w- one of the things I like to say is I take in every moment. Yeah. Like we we use that word wasted a little loosely. Like, yeah. oh, we're just going to waste this weekend. What that means is that time, that that window of energy and time is gone. Right. And it's the only thing Mark Cuban said on the Shark Tank um, a couple episodes ago, that time is the one thing we can't buy. Right. So if I'm taking this time, and that's whether it's a 24-hour period, a weekend away with the friends, yeah. like I'm not going to miss any of it. Right. Because of drugs and alcohol, right. right? Like I'm going to fully participate. Sometimes that's even bad stuff. Right. Like some things happen in our lives that aren't great, but you got to be there. Is there any uh, moment that you want to share with us or could share with us that is like, hey, I got sober and then this didn't go so good. And then I dealt with it without drugs and alcohol when that might have been the coping mechanism that I've used in the past. My kids being taken away. DCS, you know, I wanted to die. I hated myself so much. And I had so much guilt and so much shame for choosing a drug and choosing a man over my child. You know what I mean? Um, But that doesn't define who I am. I look back at that now. I was sick. Mm. I made bad decisions. That doesn't define who I am today, though. I'm a good person. I was just sick. So... Your disease does not define you, Yes, right? Absolutely. And I, you've also done one thing, and I'm going to wrap it up, and, and I uh, thank you, and I can't wait to do this, the yeah. little demo. We'll see what we can get on the podcast of it, but I'm looking forward to it. But one of the things that you've said, and I think it's important for the audience to hear, is is that you've turned your pain into purpose. Right. Right? You've, you've taken the things that have happened to you and said, what can I do differently today, right? And I'm going to assume it looks like it and you radiate, like you've said, is you radiate joy, Mm -hmm. you radiate peace, you radiate happiness, hope. I love those. Those are the language. Hope dealer. Wow, it's on your hands. We'll get a close up of that. That's one of those things that's funny because so many people think they're putting down the substance for somebody else. Right. I know in my own life, they're, my family, you know, wishes it was them and it wasn't, it was you me. Yeah. It was, I had to want to change in, in my yourself. soul. Yeah. In myself, I had to want to change. So some of those things that you're doing are actually giving people hope. Mm -hmm. Like that's what I'm looking for is some sort of life beyond, they say beyond our wildest dreams. Like I can't even imagine sitting here. If you'd have told me, um, the first day I stopped drinking that I'd be sitting with you in this beautiful space, the studio and saying, we're talking about people not doing drugs and alcohol. You're like, like, yeah, like, yeah, right. right. <laughs> like, like, there's no way. And you know, and, and, and we don't look anything alike. We don't yeah. come from the same places. We don't deal with the same people, but we sit in this space and because we've been through some of the same stuff, we can share experiences Absolutely. and, but we all can, also can share there's something better on the other side of oh my, my addiction. There's something better on the other side of that thing I put in my body that I don't want to put in or that thing that I do, right? So when I say that and, and you say that so much, I think that there's a change not only in us, mm-hmm. but in the people that we can impact. Absolutely. And I think looking forward, not only at Art of Our Soul, but at our own lives, there are changes that I still need to make or want to make. Like I desire, like I want dinner to go a little bit better than it did last right. night. One of my favorite podcasters is... Is Jay Shetty and Jay Shetty I talks. Love Jay you, Shetty. You, you do good. I good, love good. Him. Well, when we get Jay on, we'll make sure you're there oh at that. Oh my god! Well, y'all, yes. she's fan, fan girling right now. Oh fan my god! Girl. Um, but Jay Shetty talked about having a surgery, and he said that the surgery kept him in bed, and he was in pain for they they said thirty days. Mm-hmm. So you're going to basically be bedridden for thirty days. He says that he can remember the day where he couldn't move anything when he was right. bedridden, and he can remember the day when he got up and ran around like nothing had happened. But what he forgot got is all of the days in between. in between. Some of the people are on a journey where today is going to define the rest of their lives, right. right? So if they didn't drink, if they didn't drug, if they didn't do that thing that they didn't want to do, we want to tell them we're proud of them. Yeah. Like we're happy that you're doing, you're taking some initiative in your journey. Absolutely. So thank you for being with us. Uh, Let's Go Recovery Podcast. Follow, like, share. Thanks, Chris and Day. Thanks for thank being you. here. You're amazing. I thank love the work you. you're doing. Let's get in the studio. Let's get some paint going. All right. So welcome to Art of Our Soul. My awesome. name is Kristen. I am one of the lead healing artists here. So we are going to do a quick demo. I already mixed our colors. That way we're all prepared. So first things first, when the clients come in, we actually give them, you know, a little story and kind of in, engage with them and draw them in and, and just, you know, let them know how this all came about, you know. And uh, so we're going to create an abstract art. I all right? love it. So I'm going to take this first color. I'm just going to come all the way down. 
I want to use all that color in that cup. Okay. All right. I'm going to go to my next color. I'm going to use that silver. I'm going to go right along that side. And there's no right or wrong way. You can fling this however you want. If all you right. want to throw it this way and that way, you can do that. I'm going to take that black. I'm going to go right along the side of that. All right. Again, using all that cup and that, or all that color in that cup. I'm going to go right here. And I'm going to go on the outside right there, too. Now that I've put all those down, I'm a little extra, as you can see. Oh, duh. Stop it. This is pearl, so it's like a shiny, pearly white. Okay. I'm just going to take it and just flow right down the middle. I'm going to do a small little line right there and a small little line right here. She's way better at this than she's giving <laughs> off. This is the most important step. So right. This is called flooding. I'm okay. going to go on the outside of where I did my design. Okay. I need all this paint and it looks like a lot of paint because it sure. is. Sure. I'm going to use all this paint in here and I'm going to get all these areas. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of this white to give it that smoky look. Now that I've gotten all the color on here, I'm just going to take a stick. I'm just going to make sure that I get all my edges, all the edges. You must be a good baker then too. I, I mean, I can bake, I can cook. Oh, well, I, mean, I don't know, maybe cake decorate. I'm, I'm seeing a little bit of cake boss a coming cake. out. I'm seeing that coming out. Like you I really proud haven't tried that, but I mean, that's I don't like, know. It looks that, like that it. might be a good thing, you know? That's awesome. Spreading the, spreading the icing on there. Yeah. All right. So this is our mixing tool. Why are you stepping back? I don't know. I love it. They always do. They always do. Like, like, oh, God. Oh, what are we going to do this next? This is a mixing tool. So here, I am going to turn the blow dryer on, and I am going to create my piece. Okay. So I'm going to go on low. Okay. All right. I'm going to now watch the pressure. Like I'm not going in and like digging. Okay. It's wow. like airbrush, right? Wow. Now that I've hit that spot, I don't want to hit it again. Now I'm just going to go over and move my way around. No right, no wrong no answer. No right or wrong answer. I'm gonna go, boom. I have that little spot left. Now that I have it all mixed up, this okay. is where it gets fun and it gets a little messy. All right. All right. We're for I'm gonna a mess. take my three back fingers, I'm gonna hook underneath and I'm gonna pull. That way I have full control of my canvas. Okay. I'm just gonna slowly get this paint to start moving around seeing where I wow. want it to go. Getting it to just kind of flow right now. I'm not really creating my piece. I'm just moving it around right now. Okay. Wow. Let's see if I can get a nice little swirl in there. Right? It's unbelievable how the things work together. And as I'm sitting here just looking at it, I just see that that things are working together that we never thought that they we were gonna, gonna right? Like I never thought it would look like that. Right. And that would come from that. That's so powerful. So this is where it gets fun. Now that I've kind of moved it around, I've got my swirl going, I need to let 30, 45% of this off. So people freak out, you gotta let it go. Mm. Okay? So I'm gonna do one more swirl. Get one more going in there. I'm gonna let it come off. In printing, that's called the full bleed. Did you know that? I did not know that. I so when the color goes, in, in, yeah, when the color goes all the way to the edge instead of having a border, it's called a full bleed in printing. I love but it. But it makes it full. Like when you paint, sometimes you don't get to that edge. This is doing a great job I covering love all it. the pieces. Wow, there's something. Right. Just, like in here, you're seeing some of like some like of they're the, cro like crossing yep. over. Even though I didn't put any, you didn't put any black in there. And you can't see it now, but once you now I like where it's at, so I'm gonna put it down and I'm gonna pull my hands back. What you can't see right now is that the 
uh, metallic, the metallic colors are gonna pop out when it dries. So you're really gonna see that color pop. But there you go. You got wow, we've done it. And now we're gonna do yours. All right, we I'm have super your nervous. Mixed, so I am going to So I'm remind so me again. Gonna, I'm gonna do both of them. So all of it. So you're gonna take all of it. All of it. Pinch the tip. That okay. way you can control what's coming out. What I get it. This way. Okay. So there is no design right, right or wrong. I can't right screw this up. Right. Let me get in the moment for just a moment. I've chosen red, white, and blue for the Let's Go Recovery logo. Let's I'm, go. Oh, let's go. I love that you said that perfectly, by the way. You said it perfectly. <laughs> Comes from here. All right, yes. so I'm going right down. We got we got bright blue. What color? You told me the color. Cerulean blue. Cerulean blue. I just found out that my favorite color is cerulean, cerulean blue. blue. Cerulean blue. Here we go. It's coming down the center. I'm already running out. I've already kind of. We're going to go. Can I go back? Absolutely. The only time you can't go back is with the blow dryer. You don't want to go over the same spot over and over again. Okay, I think I've got all my cerulean blue on the pad. That one. That one? Okay, yep. and I'm going, now I'm going to go red? Yeah, go red. All right, let's go a little red, and we're going to go a little red. You know what? You made it look so easy, it's kind of bothering me. It's because you're scared to get I'm, dirty I'm, right now. I'm intimidated. You're it's too okay. good at it. It's, too it's okay, I have an industrial sink over there that you can wash your hands and scrub all the paint off. We're gonna go a little heavy red there. So if I miss this spot right in there, I'm gonna get to, I can go in there, I yep. can go back here. Absolutely. Uh, Kristen yep. is obviously a professional, so I'm just gonna tell you we're gonna try our best. I'm gonna go back blue, yep. or should I go another color? You can do another red or you can do another blue. It's up to you. Okay, I think I'm gonna go heavier on red on one side, yep. and then I'm gonna do in the corner just a little bit less. I'm gonna go a little liney here. Don't tell anybody I like lines. Okay, perfect. perfect. No, no pun intended. No pun intended. <laughs> That was a good one. It's funny that we can joke about our stuff right. these days. Oh, uh, gosh. All right. I got I got these People little are drips. Like, are I we? I like to smoke. I'm like, oh, I was a banger. I didn't like that. <laughs> ew, why'd you put, why would you put ew. smoke in your body? Why would you smoke? It's Disgusting. Gross. It's disgusting. <laughs> All right. We're going to go heavy blue. We're going to do a little. We're going to do heavy blue on this yep. side. So we're going to fill up this space with, with that other white. stuff. Okay. Yep. So it's already going to be in there. I don't need to worry about it. Right. Okay. Perfect. All right. And so if I go a little bit like that, we're fine. Yep. All right, we're gonna we're gonna trust her on this one. She's a professional. Look at her. And we're right. just gonna take this pearl and go along this little side right here, and maybe a little in here, and then a little in there. That way it shines. It's gonna shine. Shine bright like a diamond. Diamond. Wow. There. And then you're gonna you take this white paint. Okay. Now this is where you're going to pour it on this the is outs. The this is the flood. flood. Good flood. job. I paid attention during yes. our first our first session, and I can go a little heavy yep. here, Absolutely. be a little heavy-handed here. There you go. Okay, we are. Come over here. All right, I have to go in here. Okay, how many and then times? Maybe go just a little swirl through there. There you go. It gives it more like that smoky effect. And there you go. Perfect. Okay, well, no, you don't know this about me, but I have my signal. Oh, let's see if I'm going to be able to get it off of here enough to get my own signature on there. I love it. Oh, it didn't pour right, but that's all right. Oh, no, it actually is coming out, kids. There's kind of my signature. I'll show it to you later. All right, here we got some down here. So yep. I'm going to put there. Just is that right good? There. Perfect. Okay. All right. This is where it gets fun. Okay. I feel like I'm going to screw hold something it. up. Nope. Hold it with me. I'm going to hold it with you. Okay. And I'm just going to show you. Wow. 
Wow. We'll come back this way. Okay. My favorite color is cerulean blue. I like it already. Love it. Now this is where it gets fun. All right. This is the part that I was definitely... Pull your, I'm, arm, I'm pull your sleeves up. up. All right. Let's see which one. Three ones back are. fingers. Hook underneath and pull. Okay. Three full yep. fingers. Okay. I got them. Hook underneath em. and yep. pull. Use your index finger to prop it up and move that paint around. Let that paint flow. Wow, I already love some of the waves that are getting right. created just like I used to create in my life. Yes. There's no wrong answers. I love that I cannot fail this test. No, not at all. Am I looking to get all that white out of that corner? If you want to. If that's what your heart desires and you don't want all that white, absolutely. Beautiful. Oh my gosh, that's going to look awesome. And when you like it, then you stop. You can set it down. I want to get rid of some of that white in that yeah. corner. How do I just kind of Yep, let it let it go. You let it work in there. Yep. It'll just take a couple seconds. Oh, I see it. Just let it work that's way there. Wow. And then when you like it, you can set it back down. Super proud of us. We didn't get any on the microphone. Oh, we made only only one person in this group was even <laughs> thinking about that, and now he now I'm thinking about it, and I I think I'm gonna let it go right there. There. Set it back down. Pull your hands back. That way you don't drip on it. And voila, wow. you have yourself a painting, sir. You are an artist. So officially an artist, guys, it, number one, it was fun. It was uh, not that as difficult as I would. I like to be lo more loose next time I try it, mm -hmm. but you're an amazing instructor and we'll see what comes up. And how long do I have to wait until so it's dry? So five to seven days for it to dry. Let me ask you. So like, usually, I mean, the treatment centers that we work with, like they have BHGs that kind of walk around and like ask you, like, how does it make you feel? How did it make you feel? freeing it's it's funny when you say the things you can't do anything wrong right. or you don't have to do it right. right like there's so many times when we think about my recovery that i'm think, thinking i'm grasping like and you said the words let it, go. let it go like like there's nothing that you're in you're not in control of that much right. and in this painting it's like this was going to be exactly how it turned out unless I got in the way. Right. Right. Like if I just let it be, let I'm going to use the let word, God. let go, let God. There's some freedom in that. What got created, what ultimately is the end product is if I want to make changes, I certainly can, but I get to start over and to make those changes. Right. I don't have to fix something that I've undone or haven't done right. There's something there. Um, I feel like may, maybe um, every time I do it, I find some new maybe technique or something new about myself oh my or some look. I can't imagine with you saying you've done so many of these. As I look at it, I just see. I don't do the same thing over and over. Right, you've never done the same thing. You've changed it out. It's always a little bit different. And it's, it's, we're in, we're in the Christmas season here now at the time we're doing this podcast. And it's like they say every snowflake is different. Mm -hmm. It's like every time I look at that, I see something, something different. different. And, I, and I, the uniqueness. Yeah. And, and again, the, the fact that no one has to do it the way that somebody right. else has told you. Yeah. Like I've created. And I think we talked about that early in the podcast that we've created something exactly how it was designed right. but in that moment i'm not actually worried about other than the microphone and other than some paint on my clothes i'm not worried about anything right except for moving that paint around and letting that be part of the moment Absolutely. so there's something powerful in just doing it and letting it go and again if, if it's not perfect 
it's exactly how it was intended it's supposed to be exactly. it's exactly how it's supposed to look so well, i hope that you. we get the opportunity to work with you guys more okay. and uh I'm glad i can't see how we up. wouldn't this right. is amazing experience not only to do the art but just again the full vibe of the place uh your thing on the wall says art vibes only i'm not an artist i've created some art you so i don't now. know i guess i am right you i can say now. forever i can Absolutely. say that Absolutely. Thanks for being here, guys. If you haven't heard of Art of Our Soul, check it out. We're in Phoenix, Arizona, here with Kristen Hi. Day. Look at her, she's beautiful. She's an amazing <laughs> artist. Um, but we're having a great time. And now that we've created art, guys, forever I will tell you, I'm an artist. Thanks yes. for joining us. See you next time. I hope you heard something today that gets you to take one small step into the version of the person that you wanna be. For more content like this, subscribe to our channel below, or you can go on letsgorecovery.org. Until next time, 